Hey you guys and good morning from Tennessee. It is a beautiful day out there. I am so thankful to get to be with you guys again today. We're going to be talking about a neat little gun, crazy design, one that uh, was made right before the Civil War and <laughs> it's a little different than most anyone you will ever encounter. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Thank you again for sharing all these videos. We have had a lot of new subscribers, new watchers and folks when they call in an order that have said, I enjoy those videos and that means a lot to me. I really appreciate you sharing them. Today we're going to talk about the gun that was made in Willowdale, New York by the Rogers and Spencer Company. <clears throat> it was made for the fellow that had the patent on the gun. His name was C.S. Pettingill, P-E-T-T-E-N-G-I-L-L. -E -E -L. His guns are one of the most bizarre uh, designs for the time. Uh, it had to have been like a spaceship when people were used to the standard single shot guns and the Colt revolvers and the Pettingill comes out with this cat. He, they must have thought, that guy has lost his mind, but it was actually uh, ahead of the game. He designed a gun that was made, it's called a hammerless because the hammer is actually internal instead of an external hammer. <clears throat> he made these guns, he patented in 1856, and they made three different sizes of these guns. They made 31 caliber, 34 caliber, and 44 caliber. They're very distinctive because, like I said, there's no hammer on the gun, nothing to cock back. It's a pure double action design, meaning that when you pull the trigger internally, it cocks the hammer and fires the hammer with the same motion, double action. Most of the guns of the day, like the Colt, you cocked it back, then pulled the trigger, single action. This one did it all for you, which was great, except the there's a lot going on inside that little frame. The frame looks like this. It's a big frame because it's got all the stuff going on inside of it. That breaks very easily. So most of the time when you see one of these, the mechanics doesn't work exactly right. Uh, a lot of trouble with the timing on them. So when you see one that still rotates and still uh, functions, it's, it's a good thing. But there is one drawback. With it being an internal hammer, there is no way to check the action unless you pull the trigger. And I never recommend it because um, you run a chance of breaking that internal mechanism or you run a chance of uh, damaging the nipples that fire the gun. Uh, but if you're going to be sure all of the cylinders are empty, that there are no percussion caps on those nipples because we do not want anyone to ever get hurt with a piece of history. So this one is the small version. It's the 31 caliber. They only made, and there's not exact records. It's not like a Colt. You can uh, call it Colt and a lot of them, they can tell you the day they were made and where they were shipped. Not like that with these. We have a ballpark. It's estimated that they made 425 of these 31 calibers. That's not many. They only made 425. They made three different types of them. Uh, most of them will be iron frame like this one. Uh, they did make a brass frame. Brass frame's a lot tougher to find, a lot more expensive gun when you do find it. Uh, but they only made 425. They say they made 300 of this third type like this, uh, which still isn't many. And the serial numbers, for some reason, there are overlaps in serial numbers. So it's probable that they uh, restarted each serial number on the three different types. Uh, that's probable. As for uh, the gun itself, they will, these will be marked two different places. They'll be marked C.S. Pettingill up on top of the frame like this. And underneath the frame, on the third type, they add this marking. It says uh, Raymond and Rubitaille. I guess I said that right. We don't have that name a lot down here on Tennessee. Uh, but it's 1858. Another improvement that they did on them. Because you got to remember, a lot of these guns, they're just learning as they go. So they do those little improvements. And when they get an improvement, it works. I better get a patent on that. So the gun itself, uh, full length barrel, little baby bead side up on the front of it. <laughs> if you were close enough, you were using this one. You weren't aiming it a whole hell of a lot. It's got the original two-piece walnut wood grips. Real pretty grips. They used nice wood on these. I've never seen one of these where they didn't have a, a, a nice quality wood. Uh, as for these guns, this one, 
they never purchased it by the government. Now the big frame, the 44 caliber gun, same gun, just looks like it's on steroids, was actually purchased by the government. So they tried them, they didn't like them, and, <laughs> but they did try them and they did use some of them. Uh, you can go on to shilohrelics.com. You can see this gun from every angle. Oh, I forgot, this one is really cool. Of that 300, this one is serial number 19. So, uh, couldn't remember that, but serial number 19. So it's very low in the production of that third series. So go on to shilohrelics.com, look at this one. I've been putting up uh, pieces as quick as humanly possible. I've been trying to do some of these videos and get ahead. It had not been working well, but that's a good thing because you guys are keeping me very busy. I'm so thankful for each one of you guys. I hope that y'all are well. Uh, I went uh, to a, someone that's very important to me had a friend that passed and I went the other, went to the funeral with him the other day and I've never heard the, the guy that preached the sermon uh, for the funeral, but he was a very optimistic guy and he was talking about how, how cool the guy was that had passed away. And he said something, and it's rung in my ear since I heard it, and I'm going to say it today, and I hope it rings in your ears. He said, it's hard to come to a funeral and not be sad. He said, uh, but this guy had been sick for quite a while, and he said, he's not hurting anymore. And he says, today, we're not going to look down. We're going to look up. We're not going to look back. We're going to look forward. And... Man, that's pretty strong. <laughs> if you can d keep that in mind anytime that things ain't going in particularly the way you want, we ain't looking down, we're looking up. We ain't looking back, we're looking forward. And that's where you're going to get, that's where you're going to go, and you can't dwell on the past because if it does, it'll eat you up. And I don't want that for none of you guys. I hope you all all have a good day. I hope you look up. I hope you don't look down. I hope you look forward and don't look back. Wish you the best. Remember, tell those that you love them that you love them. Because if a last word you hear out of my mouth or I love you, I'm okay with that. Love you guys. I'll catch you next time.